so I'm so on the fence. I don't know what I want to do. Let's do recon. Recon sounds smart. Let's go with that message. I hear my catalog beeping. I presume it's a professor. I come out of bed half asleep and fumble around looking for the device. Look on my screen. My eyes struggle to focus. The message isn't from professor at all. It's no contact. There's no contact there. Obviously, aren't going to respond to my question. Should I? Yes. Seriously, my curiosity roused. I have a feeling there's something important to learn from this stranger. So I throw my clothes on and crawl out of the tent. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Anyone out there? Catalog beeps again. Walk to the edge of the forest. I'm not going any further until you tell me to do walk. Walk to the edge of the forest. No. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Stop it. By now I realize I've walked to the edge of the forest. At the edge of the forest I see something on the ground. As I get closer it becomes clear that the, the small posy of flowers. I gingerly pick them and notice that there's several flowers. Heads are missing. Catalog beeps again. Follow the petals. <laughs> and that's when I see a trail of little orange petals, the same color as the teeth I'm holding. Well, I've come this far. No turning back now. I begin to walk. I'm nervous, so I call out. Hello? No answer. Louder this time. Hello? Hello? Hello, who is that? Who goes there? Major, is that you, Foofy Butt? I really wish you wouldn't call me that, human. What on earth do you think you're playing at? Boarding around in the forest in the dead of night, causing a ruckus. He's an angry old guy, isn't he? Oh, Major, I don't know how... Oh, Major, you don't know how pleased I am to see you. I need your help. This can't wait until a civilized hour? I'm afraid it can't. I'm not the one instigating this. I've been getting messages from an anonymous source asking me to follow them into the forest. Look, they've left this trail. Ah, Kalandura Martima, whatever that word is. Miracles. Herb of the sun. They're said to represent creativity. Though some believe them to be symbols of cruelty and grief. Knowledge is always so impressive, but I have to say, on this occasion, it's not very comforting. Fluffy Butt goes and striding off with purpose. Come along then, Wild. We're going to follow this trail. Are we going to follow this trail or not? I shuffle awkwardly behind him. Meow, 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 meow. Before the sun comes up, huh? we continue on for a short while and notice that the petals are getting more sparse. It's becoming more difficult to see them. Eventually, they seem to run out, and we find ourselves in a small clearing. Well, it appears someone's been playing a joke on you, Wild. I sadly agree. This has been nothing but a wild goose chase. <sighs> Seems so, Major. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Let's get back to our beds before we waste any more precious snooze time on this fool. I turned to Fluffy Butt, but noticed his back was arched and fur fluffed up, making him look even more floofy than usual. Something wrong, Major? You tell me, human. Does that pile of rocks look suspicious to you? Amongst the myriad of pi rock piles, I notice a small whatever contrived looking horn. Floofy butt's right. It looks far from natural. It looks to me like it's asking to be expected, Major. Well, get to it, Wild. You're the one with thumbs. Dismantle the small mound, rocks, rock by rock. It's not until the foundation stone is removed that we find a, a manila envelope. Major, look, it's a letter. It's rather large for a letter, my dear. I think you ought to open it. Here? We're back at base. 
haven't got you thus far. I think it's only fair that you equal share of the spoils. Spoils? Yes, perhaps we should look right now. As I'm speaking, I tore the letter, I tore it into the envelope. Well, out with it. Um, it looks like drawings? What sort of drawings? I'm not sure, but they look quite old, antique even. But do they have value, human? Probably to someone. They appear to be sketches of people here on the island, but I don't recognize anyone. Why would someone lead me to these? How do you know they were meant for... <laughs> How do you know you were meant to find them? Because we followed the trail that led us here? Actually, the trail ended a while back. This could be a mere coincidence. I hardly see the intrigue in a few old scribbles. They show no, no artistic flair at all. Even so, we're gonna hang on to these to see if they prove relevant to whatever mystery is unfolding here on the island. Fluffy Butt rolls his eyes. Fuck you, cat. You really ought to focus more on the clues that matter instead of running around in the middle of the night on wild goose chases. On wild goose chases. Let's head back before uh, anybody discovers you're missing. Pull the draw drawings and tuck them into my waistband. I'll study them when I have more time. I think Fluffy Butt is probably right, but I don't want to miss a trick. Get some rest. Get some rest now, wild. Thank you. Sensible suggestion. I head after Fluffy Butt, struggling to keep up. I really need some sleep. Isn't that music? Alright, we'll do some research. Let's run around of a few kitties. We'll get some work done. Sunny afternoon, most of the cats are lazing on the beach. Perfect. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Double check my supply list. Crate, treats, sedatives, snare, catnip, antiseptic, cream for myself. I've got everything. I have a sick feeling in my tummy, but I ignore it as best I can. This is going to be a challenge, but I'm pleased professors trust me with more physical tests. Walking on the beach, feeling like a child, uh, what? Feeling like a child catcher? What? Okay, I keep reminding myself that I'm doing this for the greater good, even if it makes it me unpopular with the cats. I set the crate, inspect the location, and stare hit me behind my back. First stroll around, trying to look as casual as possible. This is where the two I walk. I get close to one of the smaller cats, and I start to stroke her. I want this to be as painless as possible. The cat responds well to me. She even starts to purr gently. Are you going to come with me? The cat looks at me with a big, wide, looking eyes. Come on, then. I pick the cat up, carry the crate, place the gently inside, lock it shut. Even the cat makes no attempt to escape. Well, that went better than expected. This may be a good day after all. By my success, I approached one of the slightly larger cats. Hey, matey, shall we get in the basket? I give him a little stroke, he doesn't respond badly. He doesn't seem particularly interested either. I put my hands on either side, ready to pick him up. Here we go. He doesn't look happy about it. He growls a warning. Hey, mister, it's going to be okay. We're just going on a little trip, alright? As soon as I lift, all hell breaks loose. Calling, hissing, and scratches my arms with ribbons. I try to get him in the basket, but he stre stretches out, and I can't do it. Ow, ow, fuck! Yeah, that's how I'd be at. I know when I'm defeated, and I have to let him go. He scampers off in the distance. I look down at my ravaged arms. Let the self. Wear long sleeves on catting duty. Caging duty.
I've been staring in the back of his head for a long time now. Too long. I'm starting to feel creepy. I just don't understand it. All he does is sit in the chair and look by the dock, eating egg sandwiches and doing crossword puzzles. How does a man like that become a security guard for a place like this? As far as I can tell, his job consists of greeting the boat to make sure nothing unauthorized gets on or off of it, picking up su supply deliveries, and occasionally taking a long, lazy nap off the island to make sure everything's secure. Sounds like a freaking amazing job. I wonder what he knows about the research that goes on here. If anything, he doesn't seem to be interested regardless. I decide it's time to get to know the island bouncer and go to join him at the time. I sit next to Zane, me on the island, me on the sand, and him in that, that chair. He's not wearing his big coat. And his short sleeve shirt allows me to notice for the first time how surprisingly muscular he is. I never truly thought of him as security in the bodyguard sense, but now, squinting at him sideways, trying not to stare too obviously, I begin to see him in a new light. I pluck up the courage to talk. Hey Zane, how are you? Are you trying to start a conversation? He says this without looking up at his crossword puzzle. Uh, um, I suppose I am, yes. I don't get to chat to humans much in my job. Research assistant 125. He rolls the words out like he's reading them. Oh yes, I guess that's me. So what does the number stand for anyhow? You don't know? He asks monoton monotonously, eyes still glued to his crossword puzzle. No, actually, to be honest, Zane, I don't know much at all. There's a definite lack of intel sharing on this project. Which project would that be? Uh, this one, the whole research project that's going on. Is there more than one? Depends on who you ask. Uh, you, I... I was asked, just asking you, really. I don't understand your job. I don't need to. I don't care about things I don't need to. Sounds like me at work. Do... What do you care about? Zane looks at me for the first time. You really want to talk, don't you? Well, there's not much else to do here besides I'm interested in, in it all. Aren't you? My interests consist of what's for dinner and what's my next puzzle book. When my next puzzle book's coming. When it's coming, you get it delivered. Comes with the mail. Back to not looking at me again. The mail? You mean parcels? And the letters? Yeah. The letters. Who would go to the trouble sending me all the way out here when we have email? I laugh, but Zane looks very seriously. It's safer sending mail than old, the old-fashioned way. With email, there's viruses, hackers, worms, cyber terrorists. I get the feeling he's not very tech-savvy. Yeah, but anyone can open and read a letter, right? Not if I'm around, and besides, who would suspect that, suspect that something important would be in a fragrant pink envelope? There's an awkward silence, of course. Being my usual social and inept self, I'm desperate to fill it. Need any help with that crossword? I'm pretty good. I can even do cryptic puzzle in the Daily Inquirer. Wine usually gains a little bit of kudos, but Zane simply ignores me. I decided to just come out and say what's on my mind. I mean, it can't make more make it more awkward than our things already are. Zane, have you ever noticed anything strange going on here? Cats behaving weirdly? Zane suddenly looks up, his eyes looking straight into mine. Unwavering and hard. No, have you? Well, not exactly, but... He's looking at me properly for the first time since we met. I have definitely captured his attention, but I'm too nervous to follow through. I'm just being silly. The lack of human company can get to me. Gives me daft ideas. Such as... He's still staring at me, as always, trying to read my mind. Sometimes when I'm out tagging, I feel that there 
playing games on me, like children, hide and seek, that sort of thing. Some of those cats may be clever than any of us give them credit for. Bet you he's the one texting me. Now it's my turn to be intrigued. In what way? They know when to stay out of the sun. You're going pink. Moment. The moment, if there was one, is over. I decide maybe Zane isn't the best person to talk to about my concerns. Feeling unwanted and slightly dejected, I decide to head back to camp. I stand up and brush the sand off me. What's a five-letter word for solitude? I was just about to say, alone. Zane silently scribbles his pen as ever. Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. Can I unlock anyone? I don't really want to romance either of these kitties, but okay. Snooty booty, we're doing it. I'm splayed out like a starfish on the beach in my bathing clothes. It's a swelteringly hot day and I find it hard to concentrate on my work, so here I am. I let the cool sea wash over my feet and legs as they lay back in the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby, and I sit up to see where it came from. Snooty Woody, in response under the shade of a palm tree, was looking about with her concerned expression, with a concerned expression. One that I've never really seen a cat make before. I go over there to see if I can help her with something. Okay, Snooty Booty. Ooh. God, this cat freaks me the fuck out. She lets out another long, wistful sigh. To be quite frank with you, human, no, I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun. There is something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It's quite the predicament. Oh, right. Want me to fetch it for you? Oh, would you? Really be so kind, human? I would be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We're gonna have uh can have you put in that delicate skin of yours at risk, can we? Snoopy booty looks grave. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else, don't you know? We must never expose one's skin to the elements, human. It's really quite dangerous. Look at you, cat! You look fucked up enough as it is. One must also never get stressed if one wishes to retain one's youthful aura, which is rather difficult on one on this frightful island. Oh, I know, believe me. How do you know? Are you stressed? Oh no, that would upset me terribly. Really? That's sweet of you. Of course, you really are a precious thing. Well, I do so hope you're finding your time here pleasant. Don't worry about me, Snooty Booty. I'm fine. Now, what was it you'd like me to get for you? Well, before I tell you, the message you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It's very dear to me, see? And one of the few luxuries I have all to myself. Of course, that's no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. I do hope so, human. You see, along the beach, just south of here, there is a tree branch, or a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It is quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. Um, sounds lovely? It is. I like to drink coconut water as often as I can, as it's good for the skin and the waistline. But the less civilized denizens of this island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully mature. Fortunately, no one else seems to have discovered this particular tree yet. Well, okay, Snooty Booty. I'll try to find some coconuts for you. I'll be back soon. You have my thanks, human. I've been walking a lot longer than Snooty Booty led me to believe. I'm not sure if this is even the right tree. They look the same to me. Although, this one does seem to have more coconuts than the others. I decide to take a chance and bundle up as many as I can carry in arms and take them back to her ladyship. By the time I get back to Snooty Booty, I'm faint from exertion. Not to mention walking so far in the sun. I 
all to my niece, Panny and Farmer. Here you go, Boots. Her eyes pile with a distinct pair of disapproval. I only needed one coconut human. Oh. These are far too many. Oh, I apologize, madame. Tell me you didn't plunder the tree? No, there were plenty on the ground already, so... Oh well, there's... That's a small mercy, at least. You didn't hack them down. Hack them down? With what? Their hands are rather large and leathery. Snooty booty, I do not use my hands for deforestation. Well, I'm sure you did your best. Although, I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome, I'm sure. I look down the pile of coconut, coconuts and it strikes me as properly for the first time how strange it is that there are no creatures on the island to plunder them. What do you think it is, Snoot? What keeps wildlife away from the island? You mean the magnetic bird? Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were meant to be a scientist. Realize she's referring to the force field that surrounds the island. Now, if you did dare and crack one open for me. With my enormous hands? Well, you could try, I suppose. I put down the irritation that is slowly rising in me and smile politely. On second thoughts, I'll be back with a screwdriver. A what? Snooty booty is horrified. It's a sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need one of those for? But I can make a hole and get water out of the coconut. How else would you propose I do it? Well, look around, you dear. Look, look at nature's bounties. What about that? So he gestures a, a limp paw at a shard of rocks nearby. Snooze, how do you usually get the water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? Well, the exuberant kibbles simply loves to break things. Have you not noticed? It's one of the few reasons I tolerate him. Don't you know? Far better than your screwdrivers. Don't you think? Hmm. Reach over and pick up a rock. It doesn't look like it could actually do the job. Okay, let's give this a try. Here it goes. Pulling the coconut in the palm, the palm leaf, I gently tap the shell a few times before go with the stone before falling wacky. The cracks open surprisingly easily, and the water drains itself into the leaf. There now. See how nature provides human? Yep, again, you're welcome. Quiet. Or quite. Maybe stretches her neck and her upper body towards the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as it can go before raising her big eyes. I can't quite seem to suddenly realize what she's getting at. Alright, let me help. I let her struggle for a moment or two and then I begin to lift a bit. Like a child pulling the wings off a fly, she can't help the way she is. You seem to be struggling a bit, Boots. Well, you've placed my location slightly out of reach. Oh, I'm sorry, would you like me to help? Bring a little closer, perhaps? Well, of course I would, human. Are you being deliberately obtuse? I would very much like to help you, Snoots, but you make it rather difficult. How? I don't understand. I've been perfectly clear in my instruction. You see, I am under a spell. It's a very powerful one, which prevents me from following any instruction unless accompanied by some magic words. Oh, would you care to enlighten me? Well, it goes something like this. Please, human, would you mind passing me my libation? Thank you very much. The pause during which I'm really not sure what Snooty Booty is thinking. Suddenly, the sphinx erupts and peels into laughter. I have seemed to have forgotten my manners. Please do be so kind, human. I would be most obliged. Oh, go on then. I nudge the leaf closer to her and she delicately laughs at me. I am truly indebted, indebted. Most many thanks. That looks delicious. Mm-hmm. Snooty agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. I'm sure it was. 
She's still lapping at the water. <clears throat> and my throat's a bit scratchy, especially in this heat. So maybe it finally comes up for air. Quite. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see? So hydrating and most palatable, too. You really ought to try it sometime. I look down at the nearly dry palm leaf. Yes, that's a good idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking coconut water is to curl up and have a nap, you know? Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? Indeed, human. I suppose you have other things to do now? Ah, uh, well... Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Fuck that cat. Fuck him. Fuck that cat. Mr. Paul Per told me to be ready and dress for hiking as we were doing field work this morning. I'm not sure they have anything that would pass for hiking gear, but to be honest, some sturdy shoes would be good. Oh well, lab coat and trainers this, that is usual. Message from Professor lights up in my catalog. Set to go? I'm waiting outside my tent. Oh wild, are you ready for field work today? Yes, of course, Professor. May I ask where we're going? Somewhere I think you'll find it very interesting. My professor. The professor hands me a backpack. <laughs> Here, take this back. It's very full, but surprisingly light. Popper set off it at a brisk pace, calling back over me on his shoulder. This way! <clears throat> I run to catch him. After some serious walking with me, struggling to keep up, the professor stops abruptly and listens. You hear that? There's a distant sound of bubbling water. We're almost there. Secret, uh, secretly, I'm relieved, as I don't think I can go much further. Just a little climbing. Climbing? I hide my dismay. Where does he get his energy from? It's just at the top there. It's not as difficult to climb as it looks. Uh, we're in front of an almost vertical rock face. Just copy me. We climbed up expertly. Managed to find a spot that will support my foot and start to climb. Make a little progress for slipping and falling flat on my butt. I try again. This time I take it slow. Again I fall. What happened to the benefits of catification? The others keep going on about. The professor notices I'm having trouble and holds his hand out to me. I manage to climb up just enough to take hold of him. And he lifts me the rest of the way. His strength is impressive. Sure, he said. Not a fan of climbing, huh? Can't say I've done much of it, Professor. Come along, then. I can get you there. Climb on my back. <laughs> he pretty much pulls me the way to the top and leads me to the entrance of the small cave. Surrounded by running water, it's very loud now. The sound of running water is very loud now. Natural, I instantly see why. A natural spring has cut its way through the rock and created a beautiful cascade of sparkling, clear water. It looks delicious. I kneel down without thinking and begin to drink. It tastes amazing. As I come up for a breath, I see Professor looking at me with suspicion. suspicion. You should know better. It's never wise under any circumstance to ingest something that is unproven. But here on this island, it would be prudent to exercise more caution than usual. I feel embarrassed in my lack of consideration. Yes, of course, I wasn't thinking. I felt so thirsty and it looked so good. I do understand. Many have made the same error. Fortunately for you, this is tried and tested to be safe consumption. Safe uh, tested for safe consumption. It's good, don't you think? My body feels suddenly re-energized. I feel like I climb any wall. It's incredible. I feel fantastic. What's in it? We don't know. That's why we're here. We need more samples. We've been studying the water for months now. We still know very little about it. Check your bag. And the bag is full of brim with empty plastic bottles. I need to fill these with water. 
We're going to need as much as we can pick. I do as he says. By the time all the bottles are full, I put it back in my, in, back in my bag. It weighs a ton. But I feel like I can lift anything. The effect of the water is powerful. Professor has also packed his own rucksack. That should do for now. Let's get, let's get these back. As we make our way down the rock face back to camp, I have no problem keeping up with the professor. I feel like I could run all the way. However, as we get closer to home, I can start to feel the effect wear off. My bag becomes unbelievably, unbearably heavy. The final limp into camp is torture. I need to rest. There's drugs in that water. I think today is a rest day. I decided to catch up on some rest and relaxation, <clears throat> like the professor keeps telling me to. So I've come down to the jetty where Zane usually sits. Today isn't our delivery day, so as I was hoping, he's nowhere in sight. I sit with my legs dangling on the edge and take out my sketchbook and pencils. I haven't done this in ages, so it's so peaceful I can get lost in my own little world when I'm drawing. I try doing a couple landscapes, the mountain range in the distance, and the trees in the forest, but nothing's really grabbing me. Then, as I'm daydreaming, staring into the water, I notice patterns that ripples that the ripples form on the surface. They're unusual. I suppose this is the magnetic pool. The effect is beautiful, and I end up sitting for an hour just trying to capture it on my page. for the Sphinx for what feels like ages. For a cat that never seems to move, she's surprisingly difficult to find. I'm answered eventually and by the unintelligible murmur that coming from a shade of a nearby tree, of course she's sleeping. Snooty booty? I poke at her gently and try to rouse her. I have something for you, a gift, as it happens. Oh, human, it's you. Whatever are you doing up and about at this time? It's midday, Boots. Snooty stares at me. <laughs> Uncomprehendingly, whatever. I haven't... I have an hour for lunch, and I came to spend it with you. But if it's not a convenient time, I could always find something else to do. Wait, you mentioned a gift? Well, yes, I suppose I had the idea when we were drinking. Well, when you were drinking from the coconut I fetched for you the other day. I took some of the remaining coconuts over in, in the lab and cooked up some coconut oil. Snooty Booty opens her mouth wide. I sit awkwardly staring at her and sure what exactly she's doing. Well, I'm ready to break my f fast, human. It's hard sometimes to know whether to laugh or spit with the spoiled or what? To laugh or spit with a spoiled peanut feeling. No, Boots, it isn't for eating. You mentioned how good drinking coconut water is for you, so I thought I might make some coconut oil to rub on your skin. Keep you moisturized and beautiful. Aren't you terribly clever? Can't help but blush. Snooty Booty rarely compliments anyone, so I feel honored. You may begin. Snooty Booty Booty lulls into her back, exposing her plump pink tummy. Oh, you want me to rub it in for you? This is weird. <laughs> Anybody simply smiles in response. Well, a please wouldn't go amiss. Yes, well, I don't want to make a fuss, but I would prefer it if you, if you ask for it. I sigh. There's not much point in arguing with the princess Snooty Booty. I don't think she's actually means to be rude. Sometimes she just doesn't seem to understand how to talk to people as equals. I don't have the energy to deal with it today, but I make a note that at some point she and I are going to have a little chat about etiquette. May I please rub this coconut oil onto your skin? Yes, you may. Pour some pungent liquid into my palm and rub it 
together with other with the other and I have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> as I've never massaged anyone before but I work along the lines of putting the sun cream on a friend a touch of warm loose skin on snooty booties and uh, what are on her tummy I'm struck by how delicate she really is and try to be as gentle as possible is that okay you're very skillful with your hands human uh okay I do so wish I had those thumb things they seem so useful they're quite handy to be honest but paws are cool too hmm maybe lazily inspect one of her paws do my paws next, will you? This new skin reacting well to treatment and has become shiny and faint. I see the good it's doing. I move on to mess to massage her paws, but I'm quite taken aback by the length of her claws. Oh my boots, your claws are really quite long. Don't you use the scratch posters or anything? Oh, uh, what? You know, something abrasive to file them on. Whatever for. Well, it's part of being a cat really stops them from catching on to things. Snooty Booty is peering at me with one judgmental eye open. Caught on what exactly? I don't know, Snoots. Don't worry, don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Oh no, do go on. I'm intrigued. You seem to be implying that there's a degree of neglect in my grooming. No, I most certainly am not. You are by far the most high maintenance, I mean, highly groomed cat I've ever seen. In fact, you are the perfect example of a sphinx. I'm a what? Sphinx? She's trying to get me to say perfect again. It's hard to keep my face straight. Absolutely perfect, Snoots. And you're an expert? Well, I wouldn't call myself that. But I've been reading up on sphinx cats, and you do have all the characteristics of a pedigree. It's very sweet of you to say, so remind me. What would those be? <laughs> I hesitate for a moment, trying to remember what pause for thought huh, listed as the top features to look for in a sphinx. There's not a lot of info. I'm gonna give it the best bits. Let's be accurate. Well, let's see. Sphinx cats are well known for their strong muscular physiques. Snoopy stirred silently. She's obviously engrossed, so I continue. Which is counter counterbalanced by their little pot bellies. Ooh, that's gonna piss her off. She shifts a little, stretching out her to torso. And it's of your opinion that I fit this description? Perfectly. I noticed how cute your uh, pot was when I was massaging oil onto it. The texture, too. I fucked up. I recite the sentence word for word. Although saggy in appearance, the texture of the Sphinx is surprisingly firm and rubbery to the touch. Not unlike a hot water bottle. Oh my god. This cat is gonna go apeshit. I'm gonna get scratched. She blinks slowly. I imagine this is interesting for her. Also, because they don't have fur to soak up excessive oil, excess oils, they have a tendency to be greasy and need to periodically pat it down with a cloth. Dot dot dot. Oh no. The manual also goes into great detail, detail about the very unique personality of the Sphinx. I'm sure you remember every word of that, too. Absolutely. They're incredibly antisocial with other domesticated animals, yet extremely affectionate and even needy, with humans demanding attention at all times. Oh, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, I know. The affectionate part was a bit wide off the mark, uh, wide of the mark, but otherwise it's spot on. Oh yeah, <laughs> I almost forgot. It's said they grow patches of, of downy fur in the colder months. Is that true? You may stop now. Okay. Her mood seems to have worsened. You okay, Snoots? Actually, I'm rather concerned for my overgrown claws. Huh? <clears throat> well, there's little I can do about being a pot-bellied hot water bottle, but I can at least keep my claws neat. I've obviously hurt her feelings. Maybe the descriptions weren't that flattering now that I think about it. Oh, God. Maybe I could help with that? Go on. How about I give you a manicure? Well, it can't hurt. I suppose tomorrow, then? I'll be here on my lunch break. You know, Snoots, you 
You are the most beautiful aristocrat, aristocrat cat on the island. Well, the competition is hardly what one would call worthy. Oh, I know. The elders can be quite fetching in the right light. In spite of all her efforts to hide it, I catch a glimmer of a smile before she curls up to sleep. I did. I done pissed her off, man. All right, Snoots, we're doing it again. Hey, Snoots, fancy seeing you here. Really? But this is my spot, human. I'm often to be found here. I let it go because I'm excited about what I've brought. Pick a hand. Hold my fist in front of the snooty booty. <laughs> oh, a game? How merry. She retracts her paws in the direction of my left hand. Ta-da! I opened a real piece of horse stone that I cut up in the lab. Oh, what a lovely rock you have there. It's horse stone. I thought it would work well as a nail file. What a clever thing you are. That's not even the best bit. Look! Open the other hand to reveal my fantastic find. Oh my, what is that thing? It's nail polish. I found it in the lab. I have no idea who put it, who it could belong to, but honestly, I don't like to think much about it. But I figured I could borrow it for one short hour without nobody missing it. It looks like just your color. I swear at the bottom of the bottle. It's called Desire. Oh god. I raise my eyebrows at his face. Oh, nail polish, you say? Show me, human. She suddenly seems more interested. I bet I could try giving you a salon-style manicure. Then uh, fitting a lady. Most sweet of you. Now, shall we sort the snacks and drinks first? Oh, uh, well, I came straight from work, so I didn't. Oh, never mind. It won't take more than a moment to fetch a coconut, and then we shall begin. I can't believe I'm actually doing. I'm doing your bidding. You have to hand it to her. An air of entitlement certainly gets her what she wants. Back quickly and out of breath. Within minutes, we settle in more session. Tell me if it feels at all uncomfortable, Snoots. It's, I've never done this before, so guidance would be most helpful. It's surprisingly satisfying. I can see why the cats might engage in the process of scratching the trees and rocks. I've always thought they were hunting for termites and old scavengers. <laughs> Next foot. I finish her hind legs and I'm on to the final paw. Front paw. The stone works really well. Did I tell you how I cut it in the lab? I don't believe you did. So how does this nail polish work? Is it like paint? I ignore her roots. Exactly paint it on and wait for it to dry. I've never painted someone's nails before, so this will be a new experience for both of us. I open a bottle and make the first stroke. Try to keep it still as possible. I think you'll find that I'm statu uh, statuesque in my stillness. Your hand is less so. I know, sorry, your nails are just so tiny. I'm trying to color it within the lines. What lines? Never mind, it's a human thing, I guess. I'm not sure I care for the smell of this nail polish. <laughs> really, I quite like it. It reminds me of pearl drops. Oh, what? Oh, sorry, another human thing. Oh, look. So your paws look fantastic. Ugh! Kill it with fire! The long, sleek talons are glistening shiny red in the sunlight. Oh my, I am spectacular. She extends her paws momentarily and presses them into my arm. Not enough to puncture the skin, but if I tried to move, it would hurt. For the first time, I appreciate what lethal weapons they could be. I must keep that in mind. So, come on then. I think I'll find a kettle. Come on, look. Go for the camera. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize this was going to be a photographic session. Photographic session, also. How exciting. Yes, well, I'm going to have to remove that varnish before I go. So I thought it would be nice for you to have a photo. Remove it? I think Cat looks appalled. Whatever for. Oh, Snooze, I'm sorry, didn't I say I can't leave it on you permanently? It would impede 
the nature, natural reaction of your claws. Retraction. Then I shall leave them extended. You can't do that. Her expression darkens. I beg your pardon? I thought for a moment I heard you tell me what I can't do. Surely you're mistaken. Remove varnish or compromise? We're going to compromise. No, Snooch, you heard me perfectly well. I must insist that you allow me to remove it. Insist? The forehead wrinkles the raised brow. I need to tread carefully here. Ask your permission. Please, may I remove the varnish now? But it simply does not make sense. Why do it uh, Why do it in the first place? I know how much you enjoy things like this, tampering. I thought it would be a fun thing for us to share. You had fun, didn't you? Well, yes. I certainly wouldn't have had I known you were simply going you were simply doing it to taunt me. I wasn't doing it to taunt you, Boots. She seems genuinely genuinely upset. I'm sorry. It's an awkward little standoff. Her eyes rubbing uh, her eye rubbing alcohol, me eyeing her claws. I racked my brain of ways to think of a compromise with her. Perhaps I tried appalling to her sense of style? I wonder if you'd like to try something. I don't know if I didn't do- I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place. Actually, <clears throat> I'm so forgetful sometimes. You're wittering. Well, just before I came to the island, there's a crazy sweep in the fashion world. Until I've caught her attention. I read all about it in, uh, Bon Vivant magazine. Go on. It's a French thing, apparently. Nobody really cocks your head to the side. It's called, um, the Pinky Flick. <laughs> Fleck Rose. 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 What? She's going for it. I feel encouraged. I am thinking on my feet. All celebrities are doing it. Doing what? Having their pinky nail painted while the others, the other nails are left natural. Just one nail? She looks intrigued. Yes, it really does look striking and a la mode. Show me. Bullseye. I gotta take Snooty's paw in mine, but she snatches, she snatches it away. No, show me. I pause, uncertain of what she means, and the penny drops. She wants me to paint my own nails with desire. Oh, uh, gladly. I suppose I should have expected Snooty to attempt to groom me at some point. Here goes. Slips some of the bright red polish on my left pinky. What do you think? Looks all a mood, right? On my pinky finger in the corner. My mouth coyly. Well, I suppose it does look rather fetching. I'll make a deal with you, human. I will wear my nails all a mode if you promise to keep yours painted for the rest of your stay here. Oh, fuck. It's a deal. I doubt that such a tiny amount of varnish will cause her too much uh, harm. <clears throat> it will come off naturally quite soon anyway. Mine, on the other hand, is going to be more permanent. I can't wait to explain this to Professor Pauper. loves me. Look at that. Look at that smile. Be a deer, would you? Snooty Booty is in a habit. Is in a habit now of holding out a limp manicured paw for me to massage and I res <laughs> resigningly oblige. Oh, do you know what remi that reminds me? I have something for you. Something for me? Oh, look at you with your mouth agape. Do close it. You'll embarrass us both. I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to ever think of me when I'm not with you. Ha! You do make me laugh, human. Oh, my word. Are you serious? Well, I have, I'll have you know. I think of you a great deal. You are my most faithful subject. Don't you know? Now, if you want your gift, carry me further down the beach and I'll show you where to find it. I hit it. Cradling the hairless cat like a baby, I scrolled barefoot 
along the beach, Snooty Booty directs me with a wave of her paw. Every now and then, after a while, she loudly commands that I stop and put her down. Here, Snooty says with a regular level of enthusiasm, pointing to a perfectly foul, pointing a perfectly foul clawed amount of sand. I buried it. I suppose you want me to dig it up then, huh, Boots? Ha! You always know what to say to make me laugh, human. It's quite a talent, I tell you. With a sigh, I start digging. Thankfully, she didn't bury it very deep. And after a few seconds, I find a small object wrapped in a silk scarf. You wouldn't want the sand getting into it, quickly, dear. Snitty Boot, he says with a sm small smile. I carefully open the flimsy silk bundle and turn the contents into my hands. The little black tub with a plain label stuck on it that reads Skin Cream PIO3. Do you love it? Um, what is it? Oh dear, can you not read? Yes, it says Skin Cream, but I don't know exactly what that entails. Oh, you see, one massages skin cream into one's skin. Yes, I understand that, Boots, but who's this this? Where did you find it? Well, it's yours now, human. Roll my eyes. Further inspect the tub. It's very small and plain. No uh, cosmetic logo or name to be found. I pop open the plastic lid, and sure enough, it's full of room to the, with goop. I scoop some out with my index finger and smell it. It smells disgusting, like bin juice or something. Boots, I can't put this on my skin. I'll attract all sorts of bugs and wildlife. Oh, come now. We must suffer for our beauty, must we? What is in this stuff? Booty, where did you get it from? Her booty. All I ask is you try some on your skin and tell me you don't see instant results. Oh, snooty. Have you been using this stuff? Of course. Without knowing where it comes from? But I know exactly where it comes from where it has come from. Well then, would you please let me in on the secret? Oh, calm down, human. You'll give yourself more wrinkles. Let's take a moment to ponder how my generosity has given you a thoughtful gift. Excuse me, and giving you a thoughtful gift has developed into you, you interrogating me in such a brutish manner. <clears throat> take a deep breath. Snooty buddy, I do apologize, and I thank you sincerely. Of course, I am touched by your generosity and Consideration. However, I am also quite concerned for your welfare. Did you take this thing from the lab? Oh, no, not at all. Thank goodness. I took it from the stockpile behind the lab, where the fire pits are. You mean the incinerator, Snooty? Did you take this from the toxic waste bins? I have no idea what they're called, but the, they routinely give forth the most incredible produce. Waste is indeed a fitting word. I think you'll find toxic is the objective word in that title, Snoots. The contents of those bins are meant to be burned. But why are we burning skin cream? I further scrutinize the tub, the tube tub, and conclude that this really is some kind of beauty product. This makes no sense. Actually, Princess, this is a fantastic present. I'm going to take it right now for further examination. Thank you so much for this. Well, finally a little gratitude. I'm very grateful. Well, you can report back to me with splendid you look in a few applications. Oh, I will. One thing though, say, just to be clear, have you been using this? But of course, I wouldn't recommend something without trying it myself first. And no problems? As you can see, human, my skin is as smooth and clear as porcelain. Yes, but why incinerate it? Speak up, human. You're mumbling. Nothing, Snooty. I just need your word that you will not use any more products that you find near the lab again, okay? Oh, I see your game, human. You want to be the fairest of them all, huh? No, that's not it. Right, well, human, I shall go all natural for a while and see how Without even a touch of skin cream, I'm still as radiant as a star. What a... You're full of yourself, kitty. Okay, Snooty. Uh, challenge accepted. In 
indeed. Wow. Lock. Yes! New unlocks! Recon 16. Finally. It's Recon. Recon. There we go. That is the skin cream snooty found. Let's, let's do this. Snooty Booty found the skin cream out by the incinerator. That raises a lot of questions. Why are there cos why are there cosmetics here in the first place? I decided to run some tests on it. Snooty de Snooty Booty developed some nasty welts after using this cream. I want to see what it's made from. I have a feeling this is not something the professor would want me to be poking around in. So I've come to the lab late at night to make sure I don't get any unwanted attention. I'm quickly able to identify a number of common natural skincare ingredients like shea butter, shea, shea butter, and chamomile, but there are some other components that I can't immediately identify. It's in the water. What else could there be in this stuff? I run a sample through the database of organic compounds to see if there are any matches. And there are. Cat urine? Ugh. What the fuck? I better not share a little discovery with Snooty Booty. I decided to check for any clues out by the incinerators. Maybe I can find a little more about where these things are coming from. In the back of the tent area are a couple of large pits that are for the disposal of harmful waste from the lab. There's nothing incinerating right now, so I can dig around a little in the smoldering ashes. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I'm tentatively mooting the debris about with a stick. So far it seems to be just soot and cinders. No clues. Suddenly the sounds is disrupted by the sound of someone entering the lab. I make myself scarce by crawling around the far side of the nearby bush. As luck would have it, I happen to have ended up at the ideal vantage point to be able to see into the lab through a gap in the canvas. Oh, what the fuck? Two men enter with a large crate. I recognize him as a ferryman and his son. Professor Popper is with them. He directs him to place the crate on the worktop. The professor reaches in and brings out a small tube that, or a small tub, <laughs> that looks identical to the one that Snooty Booty found. My guess is that this is the next batch for testing. In for testing. Cat urine. The professor stops what he's doing abruptly and looks at the catalog. I presume he's receiving a phone. Yeah, receiving a phone call. He dismisses the two men and with a wave of his hand. As soon as they're gone, he turns his attention to the catalog and looks anxious as he speaks. Yes. They've been delivered. I shall make a start. I shall make... Damn. I shall make a start first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, madam. I certainly will, madam. With all due respect, I do understand the urgency. I am sure you understand the need for thoroughness. I can assure you that you will be ready for the deadline. Testing on sample 104 is going far more smoothly than 103. The implements are very encouraging. There's a long silence from the expression on his face. I imagine he is being lectured. It's very important to cross-check with data here. The island itself has a significant effect on the samples. We still have some tests left to do. We're making progress, of course. I shall let you know straight away. The call ends abruptly. Presumably, Madam cut him off. He looks angrier than I've ever seen him. He marches out of the lab and heads off in the direction of his tent. Wow, there's more to meets the eye here. I sneak away from the bushes and head back to my own tent. I can continue with my investigations another time. Like, like, okay, the last few dating sims that I've got to play have always had, like, secondary stories, and so they've been like, I don't know, like, there's something going on with birds, and 
now it's cats and oh my what I I so like there's a lot of yeah whatever happened to just like trying to date someone like a person not like a cat or a bird all right let's romance all right snooty Ah, the de delicacy of a moment is sometimes only matched by the beauty of the moonlight reflecting on the sea. Snooty Bitty turns her big, shining silver eyes to meet mine. Human? I've lived a long life. And only the first of nine, don't you know? It has been s much the same. For as far back as my fragile memory reaches, seeing the moon reflected on the sea would once mean only that I stayed awake too long, and that I shall see the same shady, same shade of gray reflected in the circles under my eyes the next day. God, she's a creepy looking cat. However, seeing how you conduct yourself, human, with the grace of a drunken fruit fly, and yet the con confidence of a red bond of mandrel has left me quite inspired. You do not care one bit about how you look. Okay. I subtly try to comb my hair with my fingers as Snooty Booty turns her attention back to the moon. I have found since meeting you that when one cares less about one's appearance, one finds the capacity to care more about other things. Is that so, Boots? Quite so, human, indeed. I have found it rather freeing to bathe in salt waters, something which not long ago would have cursed me to turn gray with anxiety. In the same vein, I feel I owe some thanks for teaching you a thing or two about proper skin care. You no, know, you taught me that you put on stuff with cat urine in it, and that's disgusting. Snooty, your demand that I use night cream caused me to outbreak in hives, but once they subsided, you were left with a very healthy glow. I sigh. Sigh. Well? Yes, Snooty Booty? There's a poem I half remember. The words have become irrelevant, but the sentiment is so enduring that it is almost enough to cause me to weep at the thought of it. Music is also like that. Don't you find and smell? All of the senses, in fact, are the palette that colors our experiences and leaves and indelible mark on the soul. That's... that's beautiful. Human? I believe you and I are both... Yes. Um, that word. <clears throat> we are... what? We share the artist's appreciation of the citizen. Uh, I can't even pronounce that right, I don't think. And again, what? Really? Do try to keep up. I can tell I'm somewhat spoiling mood here, so I keep my mouth shut and try to look engaged. I have suffered on this godforsaken island from the lack of from the lack of many things, but nothing has quite matched the pain of feeling alone. Not having a companion to share the more delicate sensibilities that life has to offer. An ordering scent, a vibrant hue, and Epicurean delight, all the subtle joys that are wasted on our more uncivilized cohabitants. It has been like air to my suffocation, sharing time with you, human. Why, Snoots, thank you. I enjoy our time together, too. And so... Out of all of them, I didn't think this would be the one. This would be the cat that I'm like gonna try and get with, because she plows on as though I'm an interruption. I feel that together, you and I might create something rather wonderful. Oh, a masterpiece. Oh, right, a masterpiece. Out of what? Out of us, human. A union, a joining together of souls. I don't know. A marriage of hearts and minds. Oh god. god this is a oh, bad kitty. <laughs> Are you saying what I think you're saying, Snooty? 
I am saying that I am fond of you, enough to give me cause to believe that we may be able to commit to each other in a time-honored tradition of love, human. The cats do marriage? Oh? Oh, wow! Uh, <laughs> I don't want to break your heart. I love you, too. I will... I'm amazed. What you're saying is more than I could have hoped for. So it is agreed, human. You shall dote on me as my equal from now on. Absolutely. Love. I'm 100% about the doting. Snooty will certainly keep that part of this agreement. I'm a little more suspicious about the equal part somehow. But as we sit together, admiring the huge orange moon, I feel quietly confident that she will learn with time patient teacher. <laughs> I can change her! So, recon, we're done with the recon. There's only one thing to do is research. Ready to leave? You complete research. Your cat time account will come to an end. If you... <sighs> There's only... I, I guess I'm fucked. Slow day today. Only got... We're gonna use, okay, let's do it. Today... I'm in the lab doing flora research. It's not the most exciting job, but if I keep my head down, I can get through it quickly enough. It really just consists of unpacking the new samples and plants and flowers that the professor and I have collected on our foraging expeditions, and logging them in the database of organic substances on the computer. Most of them are commonplace plants that grow abundantly in the forest, but occasionally, we come across something more rare, exotic even. One of the samples I'm looking at today is Calendula or Incana Moritama. I can't fucking say words. Which is very interesting indeed. I can't help speculating that it's been cultivated in the Mar in the Marigold's little greenhouse and then transplanted to open ground. I'm distracted momentarily by the sound of drink, a clinking glass, and I turn to see a beautifully manicured paw of a sphinx cat, tipping on a, be on a beaker, nudging it perilously close to the edge of the counter, of course. Boots, stop that! You're not supposed to be in here. She laughs as though I told a joke. <laughs> That's a frightfully pretty flower. Colindula, Incana, Martina, whatever. If I'm not mistaken, you never cease to amaze me, Boots. How on earth did you know that? Why, I make it my business to know all about rare and valuable works of art. Art? Why not? It has been created like a sculpture or a painting. Marigolds are true art, are true artistes in this garden. Ah, I wondered if they had something to do with this. It's so unusual, even if it's a natural swampy habitat. But to have it growing here in the forest is very out of the ordinary. Yes, its properties are extraordinary too. Well, I'm quite new to botanical science, so I probably don't know half of it. Why don't you fill me in? Although I'm always happy to facilitate your learning, human. I simply can't stay here a moment longer. The air is so still. Don't you find? I ignore her sideways glance and upturned nose. Let's go to the beach and drink some coconut water. And I'll tell you everything you need to know. Snoops, I'm not going anywhere until I finish this. Don't be ridiculous. You can tinker about in here any time. But the sun will be gone in an hour or two. I'm not tinkering. This is my job. If I don't get it done, the professor will want to know why. Then explain to him you had better things to do. Snooty booty, I won't tell you again. If he catches you here, Popper will cage you. Be careful without flower, human. It doesn't do to inhale that fragrance too deeply. Well, turn ask why and see her flaunts out, knocking the beaker swish of her tail as she does. Yep, cat's just gotta break shit. You did that on purpose. 
But she's gone, leaving me to clear up the broken glass. I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change in my appearance. Up till now, it's been easy to cover up my transition. I just had to keep on top of removing the excess body hair. Even this stub of a tail that appeared a few days ago hasn't been a problem. Who'd see it? But this new development is definitely a turning point. How am I going to explain the fact that my pupils have turned into vertical slits? Oh, I can't risk anyone seeing me like this, so I'm going to hide out for a while and see what happens. Ooh, it's getting scary. I'm turning into a kitty cat. Oh, God. Here, it's <clears throat> spread it here. The shade is perfect. I'm getting a small spot in the sand beneath a large palm tree for our midday nap. I begin to spread the old blanket I've been dragging behind me. It's the one I used to have on my bunk when I lived in a tent. That memory is beginning to fade a little around the edges. I still recall how conflicted I felt, though. I knew I wanted to be with Snooty, but I had a strong urge to keep working on the antidote. Eventually, the decision was made for me. I found it too difficult to remember things in the lab. I keep making mistakes. I think Snooty fucking made me that she, she just, she wanted me to fuck off so like I could like turn. Then I just sort of allowed myself to sink into the transition. It was quite gentle and the reward was worth the, any problems. Oh God, look at, look, look at me as a cat. Yes, this bit of shade is perfect. Just like you. But really, Snoots, I don't know why you need this old thing. The sand's so soft and warm. Also, it creeps me out a bit. It reminds me... For goodness sake, Wild. You've been a cat for five minutes and already you know what's best for us. May I remind you that you have fur to protect your skin? But mine is exposed and far more delicate. I suppress a good one. Yes, of course, my love. You have skin like the wings of a butterfly. Yes, and I have no idea why that amuses you so. I'm just happy. You make me happy. <laughs> well, you could make me very happy right now. Name it. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You really ought to be more mindful of those rash declarations. I mean it. Just name it. Anything. Well, fortunately, I have a very... I have a very kind of humble nature, so I shan't take advantage of your simplicity. All I want is that you fan me with a palm leaf. Jeez! I look around till I find one I, I can comfortably curl my tail around. This isn't, isn't nearly as easy it used to be as it used to be. But practice makes perfect, my dear. We settle down in the peace and quiet of the afternoon gently wafting the palm leaf over the snoozing snoots. How much more blissful could life be? I'm half tempted to warn the new research assistant just how just to throw in the towel from the start and join us. But I suppose they have their own journeys in. I'm so glad I found mine. What? Chapter name. Chapter one. Okay, so am I going to be the next, is there going to be another research assistant? Ending achieved, frisian, research, recon, cats romance, antidote, 16.7%, 91% of total games seen, what? 